I just need to ask one question that I'll talk about in this video here. Are we going to have football in 2020? And I'm going to talk about both in the CFL and the NFL here. I am not less than 50% confident, you know, if we're doing these pick them here, that I think there's going to be football this year. I'm definitely less optimistic that there'll be football in the CFL here, but you almost got to wonder, NFL might be tough to get football as well here. Hi there, Spread Arm here. Welcome back to my YouTube channel here, and just want to give my feelings and give some little updates that I understand on both the Canadian Football League and the National Football League here, and just got asked, are we going to have football in 2020 this year? As the other day there, earlier this week, the CFL actually announced, and they had a self-imposed deadline that would have been a couple days ago, but it wasn't concluded, and they kind of kicked the can down the road here for another week here that I think we'll know either way on the deadline because what the CFL is planning on doing is kind of similar to what the NHL is, is kind of expand the CBA then put in talk about the return to play plans here and that they tentatively announced that for the CFL that if there is a 2020 season that Winnipeg would be the hub city as Manitoba has definitely done very well with the situation with COVID-19 is that the whole province actually hasn't had any cases the last couple weeks I hear. So it definitely would make sense theoretically that Winnipeg could house, you know, the CFL here. There's still consensus here is that if there is a 2020 CFL season here, that the season will not start until September here and have a shortened season here and the other part that's tying up the polls related deadline that they kicked the can down the road here as I made a couple of videos talking about the CFL seeking some government assistance or government intervention on you know staying afloat here during this pandemic here as the business model for the CFL definitely is dependent on there actually being fans in the stadium here and given what's been going on and still with the public health authorities between the health authorities and the governments here that that large gatherings and that is still banned here and sport events is definitely going to be one of the last things that will ever return here we don't know how it's going to return here in its traditional form here but that's what the CFL is also trying to figure out how they were able to get any assistance or government intervention as they initially was seeking 30 million initially and maybe up to 150 million dollars if we do not have a season this season then they brought it down to actually it was 42 and a half million dollars if we had a shortened season here and apparently there are some reports here that if indeed there is going to be a CFL season that apparently they were looking at maybe having 60 games in total here and I think the whole season is 81 games here so it might be a compressed you know maybe a 12 game season or if the season will not start let's say Labor Day that's been the general consensus day here and that the season would start on Labor Day here and the fact that the season would go on till maybe December, January, that's where it definitely gets interesting here is they don't nickname Winnipeg Winter Pig for a reason there and they have a nice beautiful stadium that looks similar to uh, what they have in Seattle here but it's an outdoor stadium here and definitely would be interesting if they, you know, agree on that and they're playing season until January here which also could be aligned with the NFL here is something I'll talk about shortly here that uh, I'm not too sure if even the NFL is going to have a season here because even let's say if the Players Association and the CFL agree because they're still far apart on you know how it comes to playing the return to play plan here also the fact with you know salaries are going to be prorated and keep in mind that CFL players don't make big bucks here and a lot of players have also been seeking employment elsewhere for contingency plans and given how short football careers are. And then the other thing is that they have to make a decision soon here if they want to have a season. Let's say start on Labor Day or sometime in September here is that 
half the players, a good portion of the players, come from the U.S. here. They're definitely going to have to come up into Canada, and as part of Quarantine Act, they have to come up and isolate for 14 days here before they, you know, report to their respective teams here. And then there's also reports that they have to take two tests while in quarantine and make sure it's negative before they go with their teams here. And it's just, you know, how big your, you know, football teams are with players and practice roster, active roster, coaching staff. I mean, we're easily just with players alone here. We're talking about five, six hundred players that you have to try to house here. And it's going to be months at a time here, especially when you got players that come from all over, you know, the continental U.S. as well here. And they're going to be away from their families here. I know that uh, you could potentially put teams in bubbles here. I know that, I mean, a couple times I've been to Winnipeg, is that I love their stadium. IG Field is now called. It's a beautiful stadium. It's just far away from everything here. But that could also work here is that you could house players in, uh, you know, hotels here. It's also near the University of Manitoba campus there where the Bisons play that they can potentially play in a couple football fields there. Obviously it has to be controlled here and, you know, you can transport the teams to and from hotel. There's still a lot of logistics you got to figure out here and the fact that the football's played every week here and, you know, there was still nine teams in the league here. One team's going to have a bye week, and if they're still want, let's say, you've heard a six-game season where they expand the playoff, but, you know, there was a tweet out there that apparently they were looking at Winnipeg being an up city, and there'd be 60 games here, so they're looking at maybe at least getting 60% of the season with the championship being awarded in December or January here. So I guess we know that the Grey Cup game will be in Winnipeg here, because there was a proposal that uh, earlier this year that they were still looking at having a shortened season, teams will still play in each city, and that the host of the Grey Cup would be whoever has the higher-seeded team that's still remaining. And then, obviously, that's got bumped here because that didn't seem to be practical here, that the Hub City Mall seems to be the most popular, best way to do it, to control it. I know that's what the NHL has done, and the NBA has done it, and early reports are that there has been not many cases of players testing positive since the bubble environment started here, and next week is when the actual games will be played here. Same with the NHL, with the start of the Stanley Cup playoffs here. Major League Baseball, they're still traveling to stadiums here, and minus the Blue Jays, where they've awarded. And eventually, they sell that they'll play in Buffalo because the federal government banned Toronto playing in their home ballpark here, and Baltimore and Pittsburgh was out here, but they're going to be playing in Buffalo here, but there's no fans here, and that's going to be the case with football here, but they didn't do a Hub City model here. It'd be interesting to see how that goes here, which leads into the NFL here. The NFL's kind of been, it feels a lot like what the CFL did earlier this year, where they thought they may have had time on their side, but now they're not, where the CFL, they ultimately start sawing off, you know, training camp, you know, combines, exhibition, and then say, oh, the season, it's not going to start till at least July here, and here we are approaching August here, and with the CFL here, it sounds like that one way or another, there is going to be a decision made here that, that I pretty much knew all along that I won't be going to any games at McMahon Stadium this year, and it's confirmed now with the tentative plan with the Hub City here, but you don't hear anything yet with the NFL here, is that they pretty much canceled all preseason games here, and I think this pandemic will probably permanently force the NFL to shorten their preseasons going to future year, but there are still plans that that season's will train camps will still start on time, which I hear is July 28th here. However, there's still plans that they're still going to be playing games in their home stands. No fans here, and then they hear that Fox Sports, they're playing on, uh, same with baseball here, is that they're going to be putting virtual fans in the stadium, put virtual noise in, you know, trying to rally up the home team, boo the visiting team, boo any controversial calls here, but uh, I'm still skeptical on that too, because it's the same thing on how you're going to execute social distancing, how you're going to, you know, field uh, teams, or how you're going to make sure the team stays in the bubble here, and then also the fact that, I mean, the NFL can afford it a lot more here, because they, you know, they're king and they're the, definitely the best off of the major league sports here. And, 
you know, the NFL makes a profit before even fans enter the stadium here. However, are they going to dare play? Let's say we don't know how this COVID situation is going to play out here. I mean, you don't know if any outbreaks could happen. You haven't heard much. You just heard that the they're still working on the NFL, and they're definitely running out of time here on how they're going to execute this. It's going to be a regular season, same season. Will they dare play playoff games without fans? Including the Super Bowl, which I looked up that this upcoming Super Bowl will be played in Tampa Bay, Florida at Raymond James Stadium here. But we definitely don't know where the COVID situation is going to be here. I know some cities did announce that uh, if you're going to the game here, you have to wear masks here. But there's no definitive yes or no that fans will be allowed the game here, which raises why I am have to ask the question, do you think there's going to be football this year? And uh, I'm not. Uh, I'm less than 50% optimistic there's going to be. Just just the nature of the game, um, you have even more players you have to manage, the coaches. and I'm not too sure here. I mean, the CFL, let's just say I'm a little less pessimistic now that they put in the Hub City model here and maybe I do it, but then, you know, you still have to have the players association be okay with it, and I, that's where I think it will definitely get quashed, and uh, I wouldn't be surprised if you hear that the CFL season will officially be canceled here, and ultimately I did decide as a season ticket holder that uh, I kept contact with the Calgary Stampeders talking about options on comes by tickets here, but ultimately I'll kick the can down the road is that the money that I put down for my... Uh, Season tickets, I'll just transfer those credit till 2021 and see what happens there. But, uh, you know, it's definitely decisions that fans in the NFL will have to make on their season tickets here. But I don't think there's going to be games, at least games with fans in attendance in the NFL here. But I think solely season is going to get sawed off here. I mean, it depends on how things go. You know, players testing positive or if a team tests positive, but I don't think uh, the season is going to at least start on time. As what the NFL wants to say here, especially, yeah, I haven't heard anything about hub cities. They're still planning on going to cities here. But, I mean, it's it, I don't think, I think that's where it's the highest risk here. But then, you know, it's the nature of the game. But that's just my feeling here. Last thing I want to close it out here is... Uh, Definitely says the sign of times here that uh, let's talk about the name changes here. Well, I know Washington's definitely been under fire for many years here. I mean, they've always been called the Washington Redskins. And I know that, you know, given how we live in an even more hypersensitive world here, it does kind of sound a little racial where it's like it has a native Indian logo, Redskins here. I mean, it almost is kind of like on the same lines of calling a team the white men's or the brown people or the black guys. I'm just throwing them out there, but uh, I know Washington has definitely taken heat for over 60 years. But then, you know, that might start a slippery slope here because I know Boston Pizza and the CFL also finally put pressure on Edmonton to change their name. They're called the Edmonton Eskimos. I mean, I don't see a problem. I mean, it, yeah, it's a particular group of people that live in, you know, Arctic Canada there, but it could represent, you know, being tough, being able to withdraw the conditions there. I know Edmonton's the highest northern city there, and it's had a long history. And same with the Washington Redskins there, but, you know, both teams are going to just going to be generic. Washington Football Club, and I know Edmonton's called the Edmonton Football Club, and I know the one name I definitely liked if Edmonton wanted to still keep their uh, color scheme and their double E logo. I actually liked Empire, and apparently that's out here, and there's another native connotation about that being, you know, empire and brutality and that in history here. It's like, I just feel like this will start a slippery slope here is that there's teams that you can make any name fancy here, like Calgary Stampeders. I feel that's a brilliant way to promote our biggest event, the Calgary Stampede, but are people going to start thinking, you know, oh, Stampede, uh, well, we've got to think of all the rodeo and all those activists there. We got to change the name or the Calgary Flames. Fire is destructive, even though originally the Flames name, we picked it up from Atlanta there because the Flames, the Atlanta named their team, was based off of the Civil War there. However, Calgary also had a historical fire 
where we used to have wooden buildings here and that's why you see the old sandstone buildings there but uh, I just feel like I mean it's kind of a slippery slope here especially with other products recently changing their products here I mean not getting to get too controversial here but I mean Aunt Jemina with the you know maple syrup there I always looked at Aunt Jemina on the you know packaging thinking that she looks like she's the you know caring lovable aunt that you know is welcoming but uh that's just kind of my take on the names there i can kind of see it from the point there but what about you know chicago and the hockey team the blackhawks here it's a it's an iconic logo there and they always stay in touch with the community there it'd be a shame if chicago had to change their name or uh you know where where do you keep going i know some people joked about maybe the green bay packers should change their name because packers sounds too much like meat packing with the meat there but uh that's just going off to the tangent there, but that's been other football news that we don't know if there's going to be football this season, but then two teams had to recently change their names, the Washington Redskins in the NFL here and the Edmonton Eskimos in the CFL here, and I know Washington has announced that they'll still keep their same color scheme. The logo's dropped. They're going to be called the Washington football team until they figure out a name here. They're going to put the seven, let's say the number seven on their helmet for a player number there. That kind of like the old school there. Apparently, I heard uh, uh, Red Foxes or Red Cats was early favorited to be a team that Washington will call themselves. But uh, you know, Washington definitely has been. Some could joke and say they haven't had a team for over 15 years because they've been pretty bad here. That this could be a kind of a you know time to rebrand anyway. Not only to uh, you know keep the uh, PC police happy, but uh, keep the you know. Just maybe a ton to rebrand and maybe change the image here. But the Eskimos, I I actually, as a, someone who loves to hate the team, I I had no problem with the name here, but that's me. But uh, whoever, whoever Hampton calls himself, with the exception of this year, it's always beat uh, Boo them and beat them on Labor Day here. But uh, as I say, do you think there's going to be football this season, both sides of the border? How is it going to be done? And I guess we, I'll, I'll throw in... What do you think of the recent name changes with the Washington team in the NFL and the Edmonton team in the CFL here? And what names would you suggest for the Washington team in the NFL and the Edmonton team in the CFL here? So anyway, if you want to follow along with this Calgary Sports Fans journey, home of Flames, Hitman, Roughnecks, and Stan Peters here. I mostly talk Calgary Sports on my channel here, but I also do personal vlogs, attempt to comedy, and I also do share my experience with them on the road or at a sport event here. So if it all sounds like it'd be interesting to watch. To follow along with this Calgary sports fans journey. You know what you need to do. I also have my other social media links down in the description below. And make sure you hit like, subscribe if you enjoy everything I do. And uh, the variety of content that I put out there. And of course if you want to be notified as soon as this Calgary sports fans journey uploads anything. There's that bell icon too there. So, uh, so as I say here, go Stamps go. Um, you know, I'm still keeping my eye on, will there be football this season? I guess as an NFL fan, I go Chargers. As a, let's go Chargers as my other team for the Los Angeles Chargers here. But uh, right now, I'm, I'm less than 50% confident that we'll have CFL football and follow the Calgary Stampeders. And in the NFL here, I'm just not sure yet. We haven't heard much, but I'm losing optimism that uh, there's going to be a football season to follow the Chargers here and uh, I mean either way there's not going to be a scenario where I'm going to see fans at the game here and depending on where things are at with COVID in terms of if there's a vaccine or uh, an effective treatment that's proven here well we have a Super Bowl no fans I mean I know the Super Bowl most of the people that are there are actually corporate that's why it's very very expensive for uh, fans to get an actual ticket because it's all corporations and that but uh I mean, it is what it is, but uh, what do you feel about everything here? You know, will there be football in the name changes here? So as I say, I'll see you in the next video here.